today we are going to paint this gorgeous little flower together. It is a fringe tulip. It is going to be tons of fun and it's also going to be great practice. You're going to really be focused on building up layers in watercolor. Look at all of these layers. And we're gonna be using a really fine brush to add details, so it's great practice for that as well. And I'm gonna throw in an extra little wild card for you, and that is that we're going to be mixing watercolor with white gouache. I love the look, I think you will too. And I've linked the exact items that I used in the description below so that you can get all set up before we start. But if you don't have the exact colors on hand, don't worry, close enough is good enough. And remember, tulips come in tons of different colors. So if you're not a fan of pink, like I am, you wanna use a different color or it's all you have at home, work with that. You can still follow the technique and learn a lot and have a good time. So let's jump in. Let's start sketching our tulip. I'm starting with this slightly curved line and it's basically going to be like a very flat C that is on its side. And then I'm adding these little arms that curve around at the end. And I'm closing it off with another wide open C at the bottom. Something to note about tulip petals is that they are generally wider at the bottom and then get more pointy towards the top. So I would encourage you to sketch that way even more so than I did because mine are relatively the same at the top and the bottom. And if I could go back, I would change that about this sketch. While you're following along here with the sketch, make sure that you are sketching onto the paper super lightly. You're seeing how I'm doing these tiny little light sketches because anything that you paint over is going to be sealed into the paper with a watercolor. And so you wanna make sure it doesn't poke out too, too much through that beautiful watercolor. Remember that these awesome fringe tulips have these frilly end edges, ends uh, at, of the petal. And so that's what I'm adding here at the sides. It's so much fun to do that sketch. Look at them, so tiny and delicate. These petals are basically all stemming from that central core of the flower. It's almost like a cup and a cup and a cup. <laughs> and just make sure that you vary the shape a little bit so you have that organic variety and that you have some petals that are flipping over a little bit and some that are still closed, pointed towards the center of the flower. By the way, I have sped this up a little bit because I do sketch quite slowly, but in every YouTube video on the bottom right, there is something, I call it the wrench. I don't know what the actual icon is called, but um, you can go to settings and then there is an option for playback speed. And there you can slow down any point of the video or you can speed it up. If you are trying to follow step by step, while you go have a peek at that setting, I have a question for you. So this is the fourth watercolor tutorial video that I am creating and I'm enjoying them so, so much and I love hearing that you're following along, but I also heard some feedback that for some of you, drawing is maybe not your strength or it's not something you wanna focus on learning right now. And obviously that is the basis of creating a beautiful watercolor painting. So I'm thinking about offering these sketches as a digital download. I'll be opening my shop either on Etsy or Shopify within the next month. And I could have these available so that when the video comes out, you can purchase the download of the sketch, print it onto watercolor paper, and be ready to go with a really beautiful basis 
that you can follow the painting tutorial on. So let me know in the comments, please, if this is something that you would be interested in. I think it's a pretty cool concept, even though I think it's so important. If you really truly want to learn how to be a great artist, I think it is important to learn how to draw as well. But I know that sometimes you're just trying to you know, focus on one thing at a time, and that may be your control of watercolor and your watercolor skills and that not being able to sketch or having to invest that time is holding you back. So I understand. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now let's mix some colors. I'm taking a red and yes, this is kind of one of my secrets. I mix a little bit of gouache in sometimes. I think it gives a beautiful softness and we're going to use that slightly opaque color. It's still very light, not saturated neither with white nor with the red and add these little organic shapes at the base and the back of these petals. I'm using a number six paintbrush and you want to carefully control how much liquid is on this paintbrush. You don't see me dipping it back into the paint, but I've only edited that out, so it's a little quicker for you to follow along. But of course, I do go back and get a little bit of paint. Here you can see a little closer how much paint I have on the brush. The shapes that I create with this usually are that I use the tip of the brush at the start and then if I create any kind of swoops that go down longer, I will press down a little bit more to also engage the side of the brush. Now that we have covered almost every petal with this initial layer, I'm going to go back over with you here with a color that is just a tiniest bit darker this one does not have any of the white gouache in it. It's just the translucent pink. And I'm going to go back over after the first layer has dried the bottom of those petals to add just a little saturation, make that area a tiny bit darker. I'm also applying it to some of the spots that are still completely white. You can just dab it in there so you have a soft layer of this very gentle pink. Now we're going to switch to our favorite tiny brush. It's my favorite at least. And once that second layer that you just did has dried, you're going to take a slightly more saturated version of the same color. So just a little more pigment and a little less water. And you're going to add at the bottom of the petals almost like tiny lines, but they're not going to be just straight. They're going to be coming out from the bottom of the petal and they're going to have a few areas where they get a little thicker, a few areas where a few other lines come out from the same starting point they all kind of meet at the bottom of that petal. You can see exactly what I mean here in my examples. I'm adding it mostly to the bottom of the petals or where the petals meet or some of those wispy edges that we love on this fringe tulip. This process is very slow very deliberate. You're creating delicate, careful layers. So you have to have patience with this technique. Absolutely. If you're doing this tutorial, it is a really great practice for layering and for working with a tiny brush. But I promise you it's going to be so worth it because every one of these dainty little layers is going to be peeking through at the end and it's going to give this richly layered look that is just absolutely beautiful and I think very special, especially when you know 
how much time and care you have invested into that final end result. So keep adding these soft layers anywhere where the petals end at the bottom, where they are meeting, coming up against another petal, or where the tops are swooping over. Right underneath there we'll have another area where there'll be a little bit of shadow. So that's what you're trying to create here. So if you don't have this exact sketch and you've made your own, think of where the petals would be the darkest. And that's where you want to add this layer carefully. Keep going. Try to really relax into the process because you're going to be repeating this process for a few more minutes. You're building the base of a stunning watercolor piece. You're getting better at learning exactly how much water to use so that you're able to control it. By the way, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of water that we're using at all. It's not a lot of paint either. No, we're using this tiny brush and we're not fully saturating it with tons of liquid. You want to be able to control this. Think of it like you are almost using this as a colored pencil. It's a very, very controlled technique. And I know you can do it if your painting is not looking like this. Just pause for a minute and really take a look at how I'm applying this paint. The amount of paint, the shape of it, the curve of it, where I'm applying it and what layers are underneath. And then try again. By the way, it's totally fine to not love every painting you make. Let me tell you a little about that. As I mix up the color here, you can see I'm mixing some red, some pinks, and creating a diluted glaze. So this time, we're going to go back to our number six brush, which is broader than the tiny one we've been using. And we are applying some of the same concepts of going around those edges or underneath the petals, doing some of the edges here, even the ones that really stick out the ends. And we're applying this wash. It's still delicate, but there is more liquid involved. There's more water involved in this wash and the brush is picking up more of it, but it's still controlled. Do not flood your paper with tons of liquid. It's going to rumple. It's going to take forever to dry, and it's going to be really difficult to control what you're doing. Now, because you already have all these delicate pieces on the page, you do not want to flood them. It's going to basically undo all your hard work. So just be careful as you apply the next layers. Now we're going to mix a little bit of the gouache with the pink. And here I'm going over an edge where that petal is curling back down and applying this very thin, delicate line very deliberately. We're going to repeat the process with some of the other petals. Just follow my lead here. If you are trying to follow step by step, doing the same on the other side. And now let me tell you about not liking every painting you create. So 
I find sometimes that I may need to paint a painting three times or more until I am completely happy with it. There are days where the creativity, the art, everything just flows out of me and it's perfect and I create something that I can hardly believe I created. It is so, so, so good. And I know that is my current potential. I know that is what I have worked up to over the last four years. And yet, almost as frequently, there are days where I have the time to sit down and paint. So I'm not stressed. There's nothing in particular that's wrong. But I sit down and nothing is working out. And I keep pushing because I think, you know, this is the time that you have allocated. Just continue. You can rescue it because sometimes you have very often those ugly phases in watercolor um, where before you get to the end, those final layers, it looks very questionable. So sometimes I think that's what's going on. Just keep going. Just keep going. But then I get to the end and I realize it's just getting worse. (laughs) There is no saving this painting. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about others. But it has happened to me. And it's happened to me while I record. And then I have to do it all over again. I'll show you that with a different painting that I'm working on, which is a lilac. That should be coming up in a week or two. And yeah, I have to redo it. It's it's not good enough to share. And it's not good enough for what I know I can do just for my own potential as an artist. So know that you can always grow with practice, but not every single painting is going to be better than the one you did before. You're going to have off days. You're going to have bad paintings. It doesn't mean that you're not increasing your skill. It doesn't mean that you don't have any talent. It doesn't mean that the growth from all your practice isn't happening. So if today is one of those days, I'm sorry, but it happens. Just come back to the tutorial another day and try it again. But if it is working out for you, yay, let's keep going. I am taking a little bit of the pink mixed with a gouache. You can see it is more saturated and less transparent than some of the other layers. And around the edges of these gorgeous petals, I'm adding these thin lines that are basically parallel to each other, but a little wonky on purpose. They're not supposed to be stick straight. And I'm adding them coming out from the bottom of the petal, going towards the top of it. And some of them are the same length. Some of them are a little shorter or longer than others. Again, to give this really interesting visual variety. Some petals just get maybe one or two of these little lines. Some of them get lots. It just depends on how much is already going on in the layers underneath. So it is a very personal decision based on exactly what you see on your page. I love adding little delicate touches like this. How about you? Are you having fun? All right, if you use the side of your brush like I just did here versus the tip, you're going to get obviously a much wider coverage. And I'm doing that very selectively because I don't want to cover a lot of what I have done before. And when you're done with that step, let's take, it's almost entirely gouache. Very, very thin, thin it out with a little water, maybe a tiny bit of pink paint. And add some of the wispy edges for these petals. Right now, one of the things that we're looking for is whether they're really showing up, whether there is enough contrast or whether they are maybe blending in and getting lost a tiny bit. So let's evaluate that. 
your painting may be looking different. Yours might be looking just fine with enough contrast for these wispy edges to show up clearly. But for me, I feel like they're drowning. It's not really the effect that I was hoping for. So I'm taking this very, very saturated pink that we've been working with. This is almost directly out of the tube. There is almost no water mixed in, just enough. And I'm going over some of the places where the petals are going to meet. So I know this looks kind of scary maybe to go over a painting where you have so many layers already with such saturated color, but I just feel this needs more contrast to work. And so I'm adding it not everywhere, definitely not everywhere. That's going to be way too much, but selectively here or there. This is what I think is going to work. And now I'm going to go over it with the gouache once again. Make sure that that layer has dried first, otherwise you're going to end up with an absolute pinky muddy mess. But once that's dried, just repeat the process that we were just doing with those white frilly edges. Here you can see up close what I'm doing. Actually, this one might not be the best example. <laughs> you can see it on the ones that I've already done and on the next one here. Here, this is more like it. And make sure that your little frills are pointing in the direction that you want your petal to point in. So in this case, for example, upwards. This case, slightly pointing downwards and to the side. Oh, I'm so happy. I added that contrast. I think it really helped. And now I get to go over and you get to go over those petals that are really sticking out <laughs> into the air at the side, at the top. And again, add a little bit of those frills. Now, if you use just white gouache, they're not going to show up. So mix it slightly with a pink to end up with a really delicate light pink and use that. You can also use it if there's any areas in the middle that you think need a little more, but try to look for some areas that are lighter because otherwise it's not going to show up. This color is very similar to what we were using when we were laying down some of the earlier washes. Now you can see how many times I go back. It is a very, very long, delicate process, but I just love it. And we're getting, it's just getting more beautiful as we go on, isn't it? So let's let that all dry. Oh, by the way, if you ever do this, yes, you can use your finger to take off too much water that you've applied to the paper, but you shouldn't. <laughs> you should use a paper towel. I didn't have one handy, my bad. But now let us take one of our greens and in a very, very light fashion, just fill out the stem, leave a few white spots for interest. And then again, make sure that your tulip painting has dried before you try this. You can add a tiny bit of green to the lower leaves. You can see that at the left there where the flower is. That's a really, beautiful, unique touch that this specific flower has. I'm using the number six brush so that I can get a little more liquid on it and make this gentle. But remember to do it in a controlled fashion because you don't want that green to go all over and mix with the pink. That's not the goal. And when that is dried or semi-dried, take your tiny little brush and a ton of your dark saturated green and go over that stem to add a little bit of interest and variety and contrast. I like to go around the edges and the base where the petals meet the stem 
I do like to mix it a tiny bit. You see me here using sometimes the tip and sometimes the side of the brush with a little bit of extra water added to mix things in a little bit. This can get pretty messy very quickly. So I would limit your use of that technique. Let it dry and go over again to have edges that are a little more sharp or delicate. But I think the mix is really beautiful. Now I'm taking some white gouache, come along with me, going over those green little points that we had added to the bottom of those lower petals just to make sure that it looks more in line with what we have done for the other petals. And I'm finding in my example that there's a little bit too much white or lightness still shining through, which I love the look, but you want it to be deliberate. You don't want it to be just everywhere because it's confusing to the eye. So I'm closing some of those holes where there wouldn't naturally be no color by going over it with another soft pink mixed with watercolor and a tiny bit of gouache. Sometimes using the side, sometimes just using the tip of the brush. And then I'm going back in You've heard me say this tons of times, but that is the technique. That is one of the secrets. I'm going in at the bottom of the petals. I want those to be a tiny bit more defined and a tiny bit darker than the rest. And I'm adding this beautiful pink color in the thinnest line I can possibly paint. And I'm gonna add it in between where it would be darkest because the petals are meeting. So we're seeing a glimpse into the center of the flower. Now, without having an outline, we are going to take the light green. There's gonna be quite a lot of water. Make sure it doesn't get too uncontrollable. And we're going to paint this green leaf freehand you can add a little more saturation while that paint is still wet. They will blend nicely. Sometimes I go in and add just a little more water to thin out the saturation, especially around the stem so that there's some good contrast there. And then when that dries or is almost dry, go back over with a more saturated green, a little more of that color. And I like to add these little lines. Tulips actually have very, very fine lines, the length of the petals. And I think it's a beautiful look to recreate. So we're going over with these tiny lines. It works best the drier the bottom layer is. And some of your lines might be a little thicker or more saturated, some thinner, but they're all pretty much running in parallel with each other and along the curves of that leaf. So they're all curving in the same direction. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. I love doing this. I love my teeny tiny brush and adding these delicate details. For me, I just decided I don't like how I painted that round bottom to the stem. So I'm just going over it with a little more saturation. That's a little tip how you can quote unquote fix something in a painting. I'm going over some of the petals again with a little bit more of the gouache because I feel like it got swallowed up by the green, the layer I put on before didn't really work. So I'm just adding the same kind of details with a little more gouache. And that's what this stage is all about. We're in the final details and 
you should be looking at your own painting and see what does it need. Now I know if you are not, you haven't been painting so long, you might not know that answer, but I think you can build up that intuition. So just look at, hey, where do I think there could be a little more contrast? Where is the shape maybe not as harmonious as it should be? And add those details. For me, the last thing I added, and honestly, I did this a few days later because I it, was, it wasn't quite keeping me awake, but I kept looking at it and thinking, this is not, it's not right. So I figured out I want to do another wash that pops. So this is without gouache, it is only watercolor, but I'm adding it. You heard me, I am a broken record at the bottom, around the shape, really emulating where some of those petals meet or where they curve, but I just felt like it needed something. There was too much going on with all the tiny little layers that had too much of that same color and it was difficult for your eye to really focus and now with these extra layers i feel like it is really turning this thing around so maybe this is what your version needs at the end too it all depends on what colors and saturations you used how many layers you painted but for me, this is taking it from a meh to a this is really beautiful. And sometimes that's all it takes. And yes, yeah, sometimes you can't save a painting. But with this one, that's what it took. And I'm really, really glad I went back into this final step. I hope you like it. This is the final result. Please let me know in the comments what you think and tag me on Instagram with your painting if you follow along. Thank you so much. Here's a few more videos that you might really enjoy in this playlist.